All right, this is Brent Leary, and with me right now is Andy Rhodes. Andy Rhodes is the executive director of IoT Solutions for Dell. Andy, and I'm sitting here at Dell World, so <laughs> this is great. And Andy, thank you for taking some time. Absolutely, today. welcome. So before we jump in and talk a little bit about IoT, maybe you can give me a little bit of your personal background. Yeah, sure. So um, I've been at Dell, at, wow, many years, about 15 years now, mainly on the enterprise side. I, ran the server business in Europe for a while and, uh, and have been in the US eight years, doing a variety of roles from servers, storage, you know, virtualization. Recently, I was the general manager of a professional workstation business and I took on this exciting role around IoT around nine months ago and it's going at a crazy pace. I had a chance to read something you said around IoT being what the cloud was about eight years ago. So maybe you can give me your uh, your definition of what IoT is and talk a little bit about why you said that. Yeah, sure. I mean, IoT is a it's a buzzword in the industry, but it, it helps. I think it helps because it, it gives a perspective of a change in the industry. The first 20 years of the internet were about people and applications interacting with the internet. And this has been going on for a while. It's not new for a lot of our customers, but the next 20 years is about things, you know, devices, um, inanimate objects, um, you know, whether that's sensors and lights, whether that's video cameras, whether that's big, you know, industrial machinery, but all of that connected together. That's the real difference here. And I, and I think sometimes the word IoT overshadows the use cases that customers are really trying to achieve. So, you know, when we actually go and speak to customers, we usually say, hey, what are you trying to do around making your building smarter and what the outcomes? What are you trying to do to make your manufacturing process more efficient? Or what are you doing with all this data you're gathering? Is it driving a new business model or, you know, a new revenue stream? So I think the word IoT sometimes gets in the way and you've got to get into the actual specific industry vertical use cases and what are they connecting and why are they connecting and what data has been created and what are you going to do with that data? Well, and sorry, and sorry. And the, the reason I took about cloud eight years ago was, right. you know, it was the same. People, they, they thought cloud was one thing and they're like, hey, I need to get me some cloud. You know, <laughs> where do I buy some cloud? And, and it was like, well, what are you trying to actually achieve? Right. Yes, I was like walking around the corner. You want some cloud? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you talk about data and lots of data in these devices and these sensors are going to create even more data. But then you brought it back home and, and talked about it in the terms of you know, use cases. And you mentioned something around bees. Uh, and, and maybe you could explain the IoT internet, and yeah. bees. Well, well, we have the internet of bees and we have the internet <laughs> of cows. So uh, I talk quickly about the internet of bees. The honeybee is actually becoming an endangered um, uh, species and especially in parts of Europe and it's uh, it's critical to our agriculture and you know it fertilizes seeds and I don't know much about bees and by the way we have not put sensors on bees no <laughs> bees were harmed in the making of this story but um, but no we, we've got um, a beehive on the roof in our solution center in Ireland in Limerick Island and we've worked with one of the uh, sort of bee conservation charities over there and what they're looking at is We've got video feeds, we've got sensors to see how many bees are in the hive, when they come, when they go, you know, what CO2 emissions they're emitting out of the beehive. And really, we're sort of gathering as much data as we can and sharing that with a scientific community so they can sort of study the bees. So it's just a great example of how we use Dell technology. You know, we have all of that piping into a gateway and then we have it transferred to other parts of the world and, and we analyze that data further. So it's, it's, it's really a way to showcase our capabilities, but also, you know, Dell is a very environmentally friendly company and we wanted to, you know, sort of do something around the sustainability side. And then the Internet of Cows, which is, a, I think, is a great story, is we're working with a farm in India who are connecting up their cows and, and looking at where the cows go, what they eat, when they take their, the cow vitamins, and then mapping that back with milk yields and see how they can improve their milk yields. So we've got bees and cows. <laughs> And soon you're going to throw the birds in there. And you have the, birds <laughs> the birds and the bees. And the bees and I, yeah. Well, once again, all this data is being accumulated. Now you, you just, uh, well, Dell just came out and announced this new gateway. And, it, and you talk about having this gateway at the edge of the network and being able to analyze the information coming in as soon as you get it. Talk a little bit about the importance around that. Yeah, I, I think if you look at 50 billion, 60 billion, 100 billion things connected in the next five, 10 years, you know, I, I don't think anyone really knows once you get beyond the billions, you know, it's big. Well, that's going to create exabytes of net new data. 
if all of that gets backhauled to the cloud or the data center, we don't have the network bandwidth to do that as a society. And most of the data in its raw state is not that useful. It could be a light bulb, you know, saying it's on, it's on, it's on every second. And it's really the change of state of that data or the interaction of one state of data with another. The light bulb went on because someone walked in the room, I had a motion sensor that captured that, the light bulb went on, it was on for 10 seconds, you know. That then becomes useful because you can sort of track it. And what the gateway's role is, and I call it the spam filter to the cloud in an IoT setting, it allows you to gather that, that data real time and do the first scrub of the data very, very close to the edge of the network. Mm -hmm. And so it allows you to then only send meaningful data over more expensive, you know, 3G, 4G, you know, wired, uh, wired networks. And then there's some cases where you don't have connection to the internet all the time, right? It's sporadic, so you might need it, or it might be on and off and it's a mission critical environment. So you need that local processing, the local rules engines, the local ability, or some of the, 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 the environments we're in are what we call real time, and the latency round trip to a data center is just too much for that business model. Wow. For small businesses, this, this is probably uh, a lot of things to take in, but what are the opportunities that small businesses may have, maybe not today, but maybe tomorrow, around uh, utilizing what the IoT has to offer from a business perspective? I think there's two things. One is they can be a consumer of a lot of what IoT is pushing. Smarter buildings is, is just a huge one. If you can save 20, 30 percent energy, even in a small building, that's real, real savings. If you can use IoT to increase you know, your production yields, then that's, that's, that's all savings. So the one side is just how do you drive, how do small businesses buy through vendors, you know, IoT solutions like smarter buildings, um, and, uh, and, and reap the benefits in just terms of efficiency. I think that's pretty basic. I think small businesses should be saying, what are the disruptors here, and how can I maybe you know, change my business model? If you look at ELM, who we had on stage today, ELM are a very small business, and they saw a niche in the market about energy grid management, and they made that their business. You know? And so there's a shift in business models. We have another customer called KMC Controls that is a mid-size um, um, building management company that's really been selling bricks and mortar building management systems for a while. Well, they see, you know, they sort of said, hey, the, the future is in, you know, collecting data on buildings and analyzing why buildings are inefficient and then driving, you know, the, the adoption of that data to help customers um, be more efficient. So I think there is, a, there, there is an absolute imperative for small businesses to say, hey, am I going to get left behind in my business model if I don't go and look at IoT and see what it might do for my business? Whether you're you know, in the transport industry or whether you're in the florist industry, I, I don't know all the examples, <laughs> but, but I think people should start to look at it and, because every time there's a rift in technology, people will either go, you know, get ahead or they get left behind. There's an opportunity that grows There's an opportunity or there's a threat. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, maybe you can tell us where we can learn more about what Dell is doing with IoT. Yeah, it's real simple for us. It's uh, dell.com slash IoT. And, you know, what we're really providing is the infrastructure, the, the gateways, the servers, the storage, the networking. Um, we have um, analytics capabilities as well to help people analyze that data. And then security and manageability are the two major concerns. How do I secure all that data? And, and Dell has been buying a lot of assets over the last five years in security, like SecureWorks and SonicWall. Um, and so if you just go to dell.com slash IoT, there's some really good videos up there, and there's explanations of, of what we do and how we can help. Thanks a lot. Great, thank you.